Well, good day, everybody. I'm the Boomer Nerd, also known as George Tasker, and I'm going to do a bit of a throat clear at the moment. Okay, that feels a bit better. <clears throat> now, after much study and reflection, I've decided to go with the most, one of the most popular programming platforms, at least at the moment, or for at least for the most one of the most common types of devices, and that is the Android device, which can be anything from a tablet to a cell phone or mobile phone if you're in Australia. When I decide to open up a new project, I decide, well, what I'm going to do is create a very simple program. And my plan is to have a screen when the app starts up and in the middle of the screen there will be a button and I'll click the button and it's going to change state so it's going to reverse to off and on and then off and on and then I found that I'll just show you this found that I get to choose which language I'm going to develop in. I can either develop in Java or a language I've never heard before, which is called Kotlin. Now they say that Java and Kotlin are supposed to be um, both valid for the Java virtual machine on which all apps run. Well, <coughs> having no, knowing nothing about Kotlin, I'm going to take a look at it. So I'm going to ask myself, what is the difference between hey, hey, Kotlin and Java? And let's hope that we get some hard, um, somewhat reasonable answers. So here we go. One of those. One of those one of those I wonder how many of these <coughs> mm -hmm. all right let's go and take a quick look all right this is what is co oh this is a tutorial okay Cotton is an open source programming language that can run on Java virtual machine language can run on numerous platforms okay it's a language that combines object-oriented programming and functional programming in an unrestricted self-sufficient and distinctive platform so in other words it uh, lets you program in two different paradigms which is what we touched on a couple of days ago what is Java Java is a multi-platform object-oriented network centric programming language it's amongst the most used programming language it also uses computing platform. It was first released by Sun Microsystems, later acquired by Oracle Corporation. Okay, so it looks like one of the differences is that one of them has a company in control. The other one, allegedly, is going to have no company in control. Instead, you've got a collection of companies that get together at various times to synchronize. <coughs> and I presume that anyone can dip in to set up the the Java virtual machine and the compiler thingies. Okay, so I guess at the bottom of the of the line, one is controlled by a single private company, the other one is controlled by a bunch of open source. Now, having said that, I prefer open source as compared to uh, as compared to closed source <coughs> I also happen to prefer anything that's going to maximize freedom and it looks like well I believe that Kotlin is going to be a bigger freedom, uh, freedom enhancer than, than um, say Java but anyway let's take a look they're trying to do 
Okay, Kotlin combines features of both object-oriented and functional programming, whereas Java is limited to object-oriented programming. Okay. Kotlin allows users to create an extension function, while Java doesn't offer any extension functions. Now, I have to admit, some of this is going to go straight past me. I'm going to have to research what this is. Kotlin doesn't offer implicit conversions, and Java supports implicit conversions. All right. Uh, implicit means it's not stated out loud. So you can put up a type and Java will support it, whereas Kotlin will have you would have to explicitly state it. Which may mean, amongst other things, typecasting. <coughs> there are no null variables or objects in Kotlin. On the other hand, null variable or objects are part of the Java language. Yeah. I don't know if that's an advantage. I guess it remains to be seen. Kotlin doesn't support static members while Java uses static members. In Kotlin, variables of primitive type are objects while in Java, variables of a primitive type aren't objects. Does that mean that in an integer is an object? I suppose that means that every time I bring out an integer, it's going to instantiate a piece of memory on the heap. Kotlin supports lambda expression. Got no idea what that is. Whereas Java doesn't support lambda expression. Kotlin doesn't require any variable data type specifications, while Java requires variable data type specifications. Okay, I'm not sure I really understand that. Kotlin doesn't require any variable data type specifications, but Java requires variable data type specifications. Kotlin programs don't require semicolons in their program, while Java program does need a semicolon. <coughs> huh. Okay. You usually do a semicolon to put at the end of the statement. Language scripting capabilities allow you to use Kotlin directly in your Gradle build scripts, while Java does not offer language scripting capabilities. Okay, well, I'm going to have to look more into that. Um, before I run off, uh, extension functions. Okay. So what is an extension function? <coughs> okay, just take a quick look. Uh, here we go. Ability to extend a class with new functionality without having to inherit from the class or use design patterns such as decorator. This is done by special declarations called extensions. For example, you can write a new function for a class from a third party library that you can't modify. Oh, that's useful. Such functions can be called in the usual way as if they are methods of the original class. This mechanism is called an extension function. There are also extension properties that let you define new properties for existing classes. Oh, that's useful. That is very useful. <clears throat> means I can add a fifth wheel to my car without having to hmm yeah <laughs> without having to rely on the manufacturer to have a place for it yeah. <laughs> damn alright <clears throat> ok so extensions resolve statically extensions will modify the class to say extend by definition and extension you're not inserting new members into a class only making new functions callable with the dot notation on variables of this type extension functions are dispatched statically which means they are not virtual by receiver type an extension function being called is determined by the type of expression on which the function is invoked not by the type of result from evaluating that expression at runtime so you've got a class rectangle shape function get name equals shape function get name equals rectangle 
Okay. <coughs> okay, so put an extent print shape because extension function calls depends only on the declared type of parameter S, which is the shape class. The class has a member function and an extension function defined, which has the same receiver type, the same name, and and is applicable to given arguments. The member always wins. Okay, so that means this is the member. Apparently, this is the extension. We'll just find out. For example, print function type class method and example dot print function type print line and then you do that this code prints class method right okay so that's outside let's go back here right name rectangle <coughs> okay um, extension functions to overload member functions have the same name but different signature print type function type one so what's that supposed to mean Okay. Oh, okay, right. So it's overloaded, it's got a different thing, so it's going to then so if you put print type one there then it will give the one that you want. Okay, so that's one workaround. The other is just give it a different name. Then you don't have to worry. <coughs> Nullable receive extension properties. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I guess I can see some use for it. Alright, it's just something that's useful to remember that it's there. Extension functions and properties. Feature making uh, extension functions, two such features. Okay, alright. Right. Okay, now. Extension methods in Kotlin. Methods. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. All right. Let's go back out. So we can kill that one off. All right. So and then now we know what those are. Um. All right. Lambda expression. This is something that's going to be interesting. C sharp. All right, let's add a bit extra to it so that we can be a bit more a bit more specific. Okay, here we go. High order functions and lambdas Kotlin. Okay. Kotlin functions are first class, which means they can be stored in variables and data structures and can be... Let's stop there for a second. Okay, come on, give me something about Lambda. Ah, here we go. Lambda expressions and anonymous functions are function literals. Function literals are functions that are not declared but are passed immediately as an expression. Consider the following example. Max... So it tries to get the highest value from from the so you've got a b a length is less than b length. So it's going to return one or the other. Max function function max is a higher order function. If it takes a function value as its second argument. The second argument is an expression that is itself a function called a function literal which is to the following name function. And this is where you can run into trouble because in the, a lot of the old languages, those functions are potentially 
null pointers. There is no test here for a null pointer. I suppose that's where it's useful in this case they make sure that there is no such thing as a null pointer so everything is going to have some kind of code but you know, you know, that's going to have its own kinds of problems as well it's a bit like uh, C back in the day the people who got on C it was assumed they knew what they were doing and then they would get bugs that were extremely difficult to find <coughs> The full syntactic form of lambda expressions is as follows sum int and you got equals that as a property getter and another as a property yeah okay lambda expressions are always surrounded by curly braces expressions declarations in the full syntax go inside the curly braces and have optional type annotations the body goes after the arrow if the inferred return type with lambda is not unit, the last or possibly single expression inside lambda body is treated as the return value. Okay, so I've used lambda functions before. Um, it, it's essentially a function inside a function. So uh, in this case, the, the function is one of the parameters of the function call by parameter where it's one of the bits of data that's fed into it. So in other words, it has to be processed before the parameter can, can be fed into the function. Um, yeah, a little bit, bit hard to explain, but... Okay, what else can they say? Oh, that's our versus Kotlin. Um, I've only looked at the one. Um... Yeah, okay. Now we'll leave it for now. Uh, what else did we have to look at? Uh, nothing else. Okay, so. History of Kotlin. In 2016, Kotlin version 1 was launched, so it's only a recent language. It didn't even exist back in the day when I was... Um, when I was active in programming, which was about 20-odd years ago. In 2017, announcement of Google on the first class support of Kotlin and Android, so it picked up pretty quickly. But who developed, or who created Kotlin? Hmm. Okay, uh, we'll find out. Um, actually, I am curious. I really want to know. Okay. Who? Ah, oh, come on. Come back. Who created Kotlin? Hmm. Okay, let's go back here. The primary developers from a team of JetBrains programmers based in St. Petersburg, Russia. The name comes from Kotlin Island near St. Petersburg. Kotlin was named Language of the Month in January 2012 issue of Dr. Dobbs to journal. While not syntax compatible with Java, Kotlin is designed to interoperate with Java code and is reliant on Java code from the existing Java class library as a collection such as collection framework. In 2011 JetBrains unveiled Project Kotlin, a new language for JVM, which has been under development for years. JetBrains lead Dmitry Jamerov said that most languages did not have the features they were looking for with the exception of Scalar. However, he cited the slow compile time of Scalar as an obvious deficiency. One of the stated goals of Kotlin is to compile as quickly as Java. In February 2012, JetBrains open sourced the project under Apache license. JetBrains hopes that the new language will drive in IntelliJ idea sales. So it was all about Mm, okay. Can soon be first over release. JetBrains committed to long term backwards compatibility starting with this version. Development lead 
Andre Breslav it said that Kotlin is designed to be an industrial thing, object oriented language and to be a better language than Java but still un fully interoperable with Java code allowing companies to make a gradual migration from Java to Kotlin so syntaxes like Pascal TypeScript hacks PL slash SQL, Go and Scala, and unlike C and its derivatives such as C, Java, C Sharp, and D, never heard of D, Kotlin, variable declarations, and parameter list have the data type come after the variable name and with a colon separator. As in other modern languages such as Scala and Groovy, semicolons are an optional as a statement terminator in most cases a new line is sufficient for the compiler to deduce that the statement has ended all right just a moment everyone well that was a pretty long moment but we're coming back to it now and I was talking about what they're doing with, as far as uh, the development of Kotlin is concerned and we're looking at statement terminals, new lines etc etc so let's go back to it now so we got to semantics in addition to the classes and methods called member functions in Kotlin of the object oriented programming Kotlin also pr supports procedural programming which is what I used to do before object oriented programming came along Kotlin also supports procedural programming with the use of functions as in C and C++ the entry point to a Kotlin program is a function named main and so it gives you and this this looks almost exactly like you'd expect a a, um, a C program to look like. It always starts off with main. And what you get here is the stuff that comes off the command line. Now you might wonder, well, what does a com what would the arguments in the command line look like? Well, I've got a command line here, and so in. Um, in um, Linux, instead of typing dir, we type ls. ls just simply stands for list. And list is going to show you what is there in your directory. But you might want to change it to something extra, ls minus l and you'll notice it gives a totally different look okay this ls minus l that you see at the bottom the minus l is one of the arguments so what will happen is if when i'm reading in the argument it, that comes off is here the array string it the first argument it will come across will be the minus l so when you type in main and uh and arguments you then decide how you're going to process the arguments and you might say if arguments one is minus l then do x and if it's minus b then do y and and various others and sometimes you can even use a case statement we get to choose between a whole stack of options and what you do is you go through the array looking into each item until you got to the end of it and then you would bail out and then continue the the process Kotlin makes a distinction between nullable and non-nullable data types all nullable objects must be declared with a question mark postfix after the type name operations on nullable objects need special care from developers null check must be performed before using the value oh yeah I've seen that seen what happens when you don't you, 
you see programs that just sync without a trace. They're all running fine and all of a sudden it just disappears off the screen. You wonder, what happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I managed to work it out using a debugger. Which, yeah, it took it using a debugger to figure out what was going on in the particular case that I, I'm thinking of. Um, oh, no, no, that was a different one. No, the one I had was back in the days of university where somebody else had written some code and the code all looked wonderful, but they put the null test in the wrong order and it was a function call. In so, uh, acting as a parameter, and so he was calling a nil pointer, and the program just blew up every time it ran past that bit of code. So in the end, I changed it around, did a null test before trying to run that particular bit of code, so that it stopped it from crashing unnecessarily. Okay, so now it's got foo question mark bar question mark dot baz. It's null if foo is null or bar returns null or baz returns null. Example of the use of safe navigation operator. <laughs> this dot parameter, question mark dot, question mark dot, it's like, it acts like a separator, I'm assuming. Okay. All right, we're going to have to give that one a toss for now. I think I've gone as far as I can usefully here. It looks like Kotlin's going to be an interesting language to use. It makes me think of it's got some of the features of of um, Java. What's the other language? Oh yes, Python. That's right. Yeah, Python. Okay, so this person is saying oh, differences between Kotlin and versus Java. Extension functions, no extension functions, doesn't require too much work. Let's write and construct a lot of elements to develop classes. Kotlin does not implicit conversions and implicit. There are no null variables or objects in Kotlin. Null variables or objects are part of Java language. Combines features of both object and functional programming, so it supports two paradigms. <laughs> Python does support more. So there may be a use for Python, but the target to which I'm aiming towards is probably not going to uh, be all that useful. <laughs> Java's limited object oriented programming. Mm, yeah, I do like it. I guess probably because I was in it so much it was hard to conceive of uh, other things. Kotlin doesn't support static members. Java uses static members. Variables of primitive type are objects. Hmm. Variables of primitive type aren't objects. So it seems to imply that our primitive objects, which are bits, bytes, integers, reals, they're all objects, it seems. I'll soon find out. We can have one or more secondary constructors. Java, we can't have secondary constructors, however, it can have multiple constructors. Kotlin string template also supports expression. Java string doesn't support expression like Kotlin. Just hold on a moment. Okay, in Kotlin we can have one or more secondary constructors. In Java we can't have secondary constructors. However, it can have multiple constructors. Hmm, I'll have to see what the secondary constructor is. I'm going to look that up now actually. Because I am curious.
And there it is. It shows up as the first item in the That must be an old one. So stack overflow questions. And all right. And we'll take a look at that one as well. Okay. Remember back in the day before Google took over, you'd use certain search engines which would try and help you find stuff. And some people would game the search engine by sticking all sorts of crazy shit into their thing. You'd go into the page concern and it wasn't anything like what you're after. So, you know, you, know, you can say what you like about the politics of Google, but at least one thing they got right initially was giving us the ability to take back control of our searches so that we could actually find the stuff we were looking for. Classes in Kotlin declared you think, yeah, okay, go on, keep, no, no, go on, come on. Kotlin, uh, primary constructor and one or more secondary constructor. The primary constructor is a part of the class header. And it goes after the class name and optional type elements. So class person, constructor, person name, blah, blah, blah. If the kind of construction does not have any annotations or visibility, modifiers the constructor keyword can be omitted oh there you go so in other words you're looking for um, whether it's private or public uh, and some of the modifiers I'm assuming they're talking about par parameters that are fed into the, the constructor okay again so they give an example there, class, person, first name, string, and that is a constructor. We have a visitor, and I'm just wondering if I really want him around. Damn, that's annoying. No, no, he's pissed off for the time being. Okay, well, as long as he stays away. Uh, the primary constructor cannot contain any code. Huh? Initialization code can be placed in initializer blocks prefix with the init keyword. Okay, that's a little different. During initialization of an instance, the initializer blocks are executed in the same order as they appear in the class body, interleaved with the property initializers. So that means that order matters and that can be quite important. <laughs> so, init class init order to val first property, it's first property, blah blah blah. Init print line first initialator block that prints dollar in curly braces name. So, where's the name? Oh, up there. All right. Val second property equals second property dot name dot length and then init print line okay so how does that work so hmm primary constructor parameters can be used in the initializer blocks that can be used in property initializers declared in the class body. <laughs> Kotlin has concise syntax for declaring properties and initializing them from the primary constructor. Class person, blah blah blah. Okay, such declarations can also do default values. You use a trailing comma when you declare class properties. Val. Oh yeah, okay, right. Yep, that's fine. It makes it very similar. Yeah, no. 
Uh, Pas uh, Pascal and, and Delphi used to let you put a semicolon there, either allowing commas. Much like regular properties, properties declared in the primary constructor can be mutable or read only. Mutable presumably means changeable. I should go and check that word. You, you see these words and you don't really think too much about them and then you ask yourself, well, what does it really mean? So I'm going to look for that. Hmm. Hold on a moment. I'm not particularly happy. Let's uh, go to a dictionary. See if that will give me something closer. Mutable, meaning in the Cambridge English Dictionary. Well, I guess that's as good as anywhere. Well, uh, I do like to use the free dictionary, so we'll bring that up as well. Able or likely to change. All right. So we'll just go and take a look at the free dictionary and see if that will give me anything else. Capability of or subject to change or alteration. Prone to frequent change in constant. Tending to undergo genetic mutation, a mutable organism, a mutable gene. Okay. Hmm. So it gives a number of different definitions, but they all basically mean the same thing. <laughs> One of three qualities associated with adaptability, adjustment or, and harmonisation. I figured that's what it was, but um, when in doubt, go and look it up. Okay. Oh, I don't want to be there. Where was I? Now yeah, I'm getting cranky. I'll take a look at that later. I was going to blow it away. Nope. I thought I had a Wikipedia page out. Ah, here we are. <laughs> okay. Much like regular properties, properties clear in the primary constructor can be mutable, var or read only. Val. Okay, so that's what it is. <laughs> So if it's vowel, means it can only be read from outside the class. It can't be changed. Whereas var can be changed. But presumably it means that you could set the value of vowels or read onlys inside. You couldn't. <laughs> the structure has annotations of visible one. The constructor, constructor keyword is required. Okay. Oh yeah, right. So public, that's a visibility. Inject constructor name, okay. So, I'll take a look at that in a moment. Class can also declare secondary constructors that are prefixed with constructor. <laughs> Class pet constructor owner person owner pets add this. Oh, okay, so when it creates it, it automatically adds itself to the list. <laughs> Don't even have to think about it. Class has a primary constructor. Each secondary constructor needs to delegate to the primary constructor either directly or indirectly through another secondary constructor delegation to another constructor of the same class using this keyword. 
class person, Val, name string, Val children, mutable list. Okay. Right, okay, so it must, uh, must be a specific type. <laughs> I'll have to investigate that as well. Construct a name, string, parent, person. So the name and who their parent is. So those would be the parameters. This name, parent, children, add this. Okay. <laughs> Code and initialize the blocks effectively becomes part of the primary constructor. Delegation to the primary constructor happens as the first statement of the secondary constructor. So the code and all initializer blocks and property initializers is executed. Okay, right. It's got constructors. Why? Why did it have construct doors? Haven't seen. Is that a keyword of some kind? Hmm. For non abstract class does not declare any constructors, primary or secondary, it will have generated a primary constructor with no arguments. The visibility of the constructor will be public. If you don't want your class to have a public constructor, <laughs> declare an empty primary constructor with non-default visibility class don't create me private constructor all of the primary constructor parameters have default values to compile or generate additional parameter list constructor which will use the default values this makes it easy to use colon with a library such as Jackson or JPA that creates class instances with parameter lists constructors <laughs> creating in oh come on <coughs> to create an instance of a class call a constructor as if it were a regular function val invoice equals invoice so this here is effectively a pointer to the information that you want on the memory. Val, customer, customer Joe Smith. Kotlin does not have a new keyword. Okay, well that's useful to know. The process of creating instances of nested inner and anonymous inner classes is described in nested classes. Class members. Classes can contain constructors and initializer blocks, functions, properties, nested inner classes, and object declarations. <laughs> and I suppose if your class is big enough and complex enough, you'd probably want to have classes within classes. Hmm. Damn. Way. All right, that's better. Classes can be derived from each other and form inheritance hierarchies. Learn more about inheritance in Kotlin. Hmm. I'm going down a bit of a rabbit hole here. Class may be declared abstract along with some or all of its members. An abstract member does not have information in its class. You don't need to annotate abstract classes or functions with open. Abstract class polygon, abstract fun draw. That's a function. Not fun as in happy joy joy. Class rectangle, polygon. Poor poly. Um, override fun draw. Okay, to, to draw the rectangle. Right, so you got an abstract and it doesn't know how to draw, but you've got to, so you have to override it so that it knows how to draw. Okay. You can override a non abstract open member with an abstract one. Oh, that's interesting. 
class polygon open fun draw and what was that one abstract fun draw open okay so they because I suppose when you declare sometimes you don't know how it's going to be implemented okay class wild shape woohoo wild shape <coughs> okay Companion objects, if you need to write a function that can be called without having class instance but needs access, the internals of the class, such as the factory, <sighs> factory method. <laughs> Damn, it's been a while since I've seen those. Okay, so there are things that are different, but not that different. When I did a master's level study, one of our jobs one of our assignments was to write up some code in in Java and it seems to me that some other people managed to get a look at my code because they mentioned it to me later on saying that my code was certainly at another level so it would suggest that okay where am I now Oh, that's right, I just blew away a page, didn't I? Blew away. Let's just go back. And so take a look. Oh, yeah, got to the end. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to blow that one away completely now. Oh, yeah, that's right, I'm here for visibility um, modifiers. Come on, show us your face. Uh, right, come on. Ah, here we go, right here. All right, we've got private, protected, internal, and public. The default visibility is public. I suppose you learn how the modifiers apply to different types of declaring scopes. Okay, packages, function properties. Classes, objects, and end faces can be declared at the top level directly inside a package so you've got a function and then you've got a class okay so you can, you can declare oh okay all right so the package is what used to be known in Pascal as a unit and it was a file that contained a chunk of code which you could then plug into the rest of the thing and you would have to declare the units within the main program to be able to use them otherwise it couldn't see them it's a useful way of organizing your program so that you can dip into one part, part only when you need to and later on I'll probably talk about why if you don't use a bit of public declarations will be visible everywhere if your market declaration is private, it will only be visible inside the file that contains the declaration. If you mark it as internal, it will be visible everywhere in the same module. Protected modifier is not available for top level declarations. To use a visible top level declaration from another package, you should import it. So here, private fun. Okay, so it's invisible inside. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. So you can't see it outside, and that that's that can be useful because you want a function to do certain thing that you don't want other um, other places to be able to call and mess with. Public bar bar 
int equals 5, private set, internal val, baz equals 6. For members declared inside a class. Private means the member is visible inside this class only. Ah, okay, so you can use private in more ways than one. Protected means that the member has the same visibility as one marked private but that it is also visible in subclasses. Okay, yep, right. So a subclass would presumably be an inherited class. I'll have to find out. Internal means that any client inside this module who sees the declaring class sees its internal members. Okay. Public means that any client who sees the declaring class sees its public members. Kotlin and outer class does not see the private members of its inner classes. Okay. If you override a protected or internal member and do not specify the visibility explicitly, the overriding member will also have the same visibility as the original. Private protected, internal vow protected class nested public val e int equals 5 we've got a b c d okay subclass outer a is not visible b and c are visible oh okay yep that's fine so subclasses is inherited from outer nested and E are visible. Let's take a look. Right, so that's, yes, we can see that. And what was the other one? E. Okay, public. Oh, yeah, okay, because that's public within. Right, yep, we can see that. Override val B equals 5. B is protected. Override val C. C is internal. Okay, yep, all right. Okay, that all makes sense. Doesn't mean I'm going to remember it to start with as time goes by use the following syntax to specify the visibility of the primary constructor in a class of a class Damn. brave is starting to give me the shits I think I'm gonna kill off a few things here oh no I don't want to do that Go away. You can go away too. Ah, I remember this. I was grabbing some shit before. Wasn't this bunch of books or shit? Hmm. So you got pipe wire there. OBS to zoom. I'll have to take a look at that. Looking forward to fooling around with that. Um, a bit of Linux fun. There's things you can do in Linux that Windows just won't let you do. That's one of the reasons I like Linux. It gives you a bit more freedom to do shit. Alright. So I'm running down a different rabbit trail here. say the page was helpful sometimes you've got to sit there 
and you've got to read things slowly to be able to comprehend. I tend to be a skim reader most of the time. Okay. All classes in Kotlin have a common super class. Any? Which is? Oh, okay, any. Right. <clears throat> which is the default superclass for a class with no supertypes declared. So class example implicitly inherits from any. Any has three methods, equals, hash code, and to string. Thus these methods are defined for all Kotlin classes. By default, Kotlin classes are final. They can't be inherited. To make a class inheritable, mark it with the open keyword open class okay class is open for inheritance we're open for business <laughs> dear me to declare an explicit super type place the type after a colon in the class header oh okay so open class base p as an integer class derived p integer base p <laughs> um, that must be the constructor or something yeah that's the way it looks if the derived class has a primary constructor the base class can and must be initialized in that primary constructor according to its parameters. If the derived class has no primary constructor, then each secondary constructor has to initialize the base type using the super keyword. So it's pointing to the ah, OK, yep, right. Or it has to delegate to another constructor which does. Note that in this case, different secondary constructors can call different constructors the base type. Well, you know, after 18 years of not programming, they're really, apart from changes in keywords and a few mindsets and things like that, the general principles of object-oriented programming that existed back in the day still pretty much the same. Because one of the other things I noticed, we've got properties, interfaces, functional interfaces, visibility modifiers, extensions we didn't do too much about, data classes, sealed classes, you know, look more into those later. Um, I tend to be the kind of person that works on the assumption you cannot know everything. Um, immediately the idea is, is to get to know enough to be useful and then you start doing the research on the rest of it as you go along but then you're coming into issues with software design and uh, we'll be looking into that at some stage Tuna construction of a new instance of derived class. The base initialization is done as the first step. Proceed only by the evaluation of the arguments. Okay, this is getting boring. Uh, calling the superclass implementation. Let's take a quick look at that. Code and a derived class can call its superclass functions and property accessor implementation using the super keyword. So you've got fill color, string get equals super border color. So it's calling the ancestor class function rather than the child, the inherited function. So the super class here is a rectangle. The descendant class is filled rectangle. So its constructor is open. Oh boy, now I've already forgotten what open means. 
draw print line drawing a rectangle bow border color string get equals black and it says print line filling the rectangle fill color string get equals super border color and super ah okay so it's calling the vowel border color so you could actually declare border color in here and call it something else but you might want to call the the super one and that kind of has its uses inside an inner class accessing a super class from an outer class is done using the super keyword qualified with the outer class super at alta hmm? super at outer let me take a look at that super ah oh, at field rectangle okay right class filler yep right okay so basically the super at outer the outer itself is just the name of the actual outer class so in this case down here was super at field rectangle so they've replaced outer with field rectangle which is this one up here all right in Kotlin implementation inheritance is regulated by the following rule if the class inherits multiple implementations of the same member from its immediate super classes it must override this member and provide its own implementation perhaps one of the inherited ones using one of the inheritors to denote the super type from which the inherited implementation is taken use super qualified by super type in angle brackets such as super base okay right so there's your top class rectangle interface polygon we'll take a look at an interface in a moment I'm not sure if they are running it the same way as they do but <coughs> they are potentially useful <coughs> interface polygon draw okay class square rectangle compiler requires draw to be overridden okay so what they're going to do is override function draw rectangle dot draw so super and then which class it's going to do dot draw rectangle dot draw super polygon dot draw call to polygon dot draw it's fine to inherit from both rectangle and polygon but both of them have their implementations of draw so you need to override draw in square and provide a separate implementation for it to eliminate the ambiguity yes okay Gonna have a quick look at properties. Declaring properties. Class address. Ba 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 ba. Right. The user property. Simply refer to it by its name. Address is as address. Bar result equals address. Okay. Result dot name equals address dot name. Result dot street was result street yada 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 and then return result. Now where did result get? There is no new. Oh, okay, right, fine. Equals address. So in other words, it's built at that particular line there. So the class is built at that line, and then it comes into existence. Full syntax for a property name is as follows: property name, property type equals property initializer okay and then getter and setter <coughs> all right uh initialize equals one explicit initializer required <coughs> default getter Full syntax of read-only property decoration differs from 
a mutable one in two ways. It starts with a vowel instead of a bar and does not allow a setter. And a default getter. Hmm. You can omit the property type if it can be inferred from the getter. Our square equals get this dot width times this dot height. If you define a custom getter, it will be called every time you assign a value to the property, ex except its initialization. The custom set looks like this bar string representation string get equals this to string set set data from string value so it's values to see if I can mention the name of the setter parameter is value that you can choose a different name if you prefer. If you need to annotate a successor, accessor, or change its visibility, you don't need to change the default implementation. You can define the accessor without defining its property. <coughs> property holds value in memory. Fields cannot be declared directly when a property needs backing field. When the backing field can be referenced in the accessors using the field identifier counter equals zero. Set value. If value greater than or equal to zero, build equals value. Hmm. Okay, we've read only properties known at compile time, mark it as compile time constant using the constant modifier. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, constant. Yep, okay. Lay initialize properties and values. Normally, properties declared as having non null type must be initialized in the constructor. However, it's often the case. But doing so is not convenient. For example, properties can be initialized through dependency injection or in the setup method of a unit test. In these cases, you cannot supply a non null initialized in the constructor, but you still want to avoid null checks when referencing the property inside the body of a class. <coughs> to handle such cases, you mark the property with a late init modifier. Okay. Use on var properties and then so the property of a class, not in the primary construction, only when the property does not have a custom getter or setter, as well as for top level properties and local values. The type of property or variable must be non null and it must not be a primitive type. Okay. Overriding properties. Hmm. All right. I think the best thing to do at this point in time is I can spend lots and lots of time reading the manual. Actually, I've just got an idea. Uh, yeah, yeah. I clicked on the wrong thing, wrong tab. So Kotlin language, I'm going to bookmark this because it's useful as a reference. Yeah, that'll do. Leave it in software development. Docs. Okay. Ah, there you go. Up there. Docs. 
solutions docs. have to get to know some of the other stuff as well okay routines well while I'm there have a quick look asynchronous or non-blocking program is an important part of development and creating server-side desktop and mobile applications server-side definitely it's important to provide experience it's not <gasps> and they're fluid from the user's perspective but also scalable when needed. Kotlin solved this problem in a flexible way by providing coroutine support at language level and delegating most of the functionality to libraries. Oh, okay, so we're looking at what's known by some as a thin interface, which basically means that most of the code is done behind the scenes so that it minimizes the amount of changes you have to make when you go say from one device to another so if i go to if i write a an application for a phone and then i want a desktop version all i have to do is change the screen controls but hardly anything of the code underneath Right. Take a quick look at the co-routines guide. Uh. Oh, come on. Oh, that's better. Kotlin as a language provides only minimal low-level APIs and its standard library to enable various other libraries to utilize co-routines. I'll finish this paragraph and call it quits uh, as far as this particular video is concerned. Like many other languages with similar capabilities, async and await are not keywords in Kotlin and are not even part of the standard library. Moreover, Kotlin's concept of suspending function provides a safer and less error prone abstraction for asynchronous operations than futures and promises. Kotlinx.coroutines is a rich library for coroutines developed by JetBrains. It contains a number of high-level coroutine enabled primitives that this guide covers, including launch, async, and others. So this is all about process control and thread control. All right, coroutines and channels. Oh, yeah, look, no, I'll come back to that later. I'll only get back into it if I want to... Um, if it's going to be useful to me, it, it I dare say it definitely will be, but not right now. Okay, let's talk about code routines. It does a lot of yeah, there's a lot of stuff there, so we'll take a look at it eventually. What's this API reference? I want to look standard library, standard lib, test library. That must be the unit testing. That will be quite fascinating. What happened to my left left side? Higher order functions implement idiomatic idiomatic patterns. Let apply use synchronize. Extension functions providing querying operations for collections and sequences. Various utilities for working with strings and char sequences. Extensions for the Java development and kit classes make it convenient to work with files, IO, and threading. Core functions and types are available on all supported flat platform platforms. Hmm, platforms. Interesting spoonerism there. Okay. 
this here would be all the various data types iterable collection list set map I should go into um, data types at some stage because they are quite interesting and you can do a lot with uh, various data routines in fact data is so important that uh, one fellow by the name of Nicholas Worth wrote a book called I think it was data structures plus algorithms equals programs so it's essentially like a recipe if you think of a cooking recipe for those of you that like going into the kitchen you have your recipe and you say okay it's got a list of ingredients and it has a method which you then use to do something to the ingredients with and at the end if you follow the instructions appropriately it should give you quite a decent now what are these so I'll take a, okay I want to see what's going on what does this mean okay all right okay so this is going to be a whole stack of stuff that's going to have to be learnt as well so in other words <coughs> we're going into a new language <sighs> but there's no side thing okay I'm just going to jump back because there's no side column I was wondering the side column okay so Oh, that's right, the API reference, that's what I wanted. Test library, yeah, I want to see these. What's Ktor? really tell you much all right I'm gonna have to look that up looks like it's more client Hang on, let's go back on iOS so it must be dealing with um, the Apple operating system okay So this is a different website. Let's go back and take a quick look at it. Oh, come on, tell me something more. Okay, okay. All right, I'm going to go back to the generic server. back and take a quick look at Tiobi At the moment, it's only point three eight percent. So the question is, do I really want to go in Kotlin? programming Kotlin can do it's 
says it's a general purpose language. Compiled on JPM or be transpiled to JavaScript. Made a compilation in the making. It's a rising programming language. Okay, well, well, there's one way to find out, I suppose. Been out for okay, it claims to be exploding in popularity. It says it doubled each year 2011 to 2015. When did that come? What you need to know about it, I reckon it's fastest growing programming language uh, right 1.1 million developers probably because Google made it the preferred language okay so when you've got a big company like Google pushing it it's probably why Uh, called in a stack overflow. I reckon it outranks Python. That's interesting. It's Python is supposed to be. It's the second most beloved language. It's called into a stack overflow sort of behind only Rust and followed by Python. Right, here's a question why JetBrains language to create in 2011 and so quickly won developers' hearts over more established options. Find out. For survey 2744. Developers in the state of Kotlin before it came out. Kotlin's growth doubled each year from 2011 to 2015 when it saw its first massive spike in usage report. Beyond that year, Square adopted the language and many others followed suit. Then in May 2017, Google named Kotlin an official language of Android with full support, and a number of large Android users began adopting it. Why would you call them users? They're developers. Some people, their terminology is left wanting sometimes. Android apps built with Kotlin include Slack and Netflix, our sister site. Noted. In its early days, Kotlin was picked up primarily by experienced professional developers. After, after the Google announcement, its usage it's among students and newer developers skyrocketed the pusher report found while total adoption language was around 40% in 2017. Adoption among students in that year hit nearly 63% according to the report and more than half of the Kotlin developers surveyed reported they'd been working as developers less than five years. Likely due to Google influence, Kotlin rose from the 65th most popular language. What the heck was that? Okay, we'll go and take a look. Someone tried ringing me just now. Just try and find out who it was. Hmm. Alright. That is annoying. That is freaking annoying. Okay. That is an interesting verse. 
For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. Maybe she should take a look at Erin Clary's book, The Curse of the High IQ. It's the first thing I thought of. I'll mention it to her later on. Okay. Likely due to the Google influence, Scotland rose from the 65th most popular language in 2017 to the 27th most popular in 2018. Making the, when was this article written? I didn't even look. Oh, back in 2018. Okay, so it has gone up in popularity. Second passes after Swift, according to a Red Monk report. Cotton developers surveyed who are actively working more than 60 cents a day. They currently use the language in their work projects. The report found that about 55% said they use Kotlin exclusively when it comes to side projects. The majority of Kotlin developers, 80% are using the language to build Android apps. All right. Some 31% say they use it for back-end server-side applications, while another 31% cent they use it for SDK slash libraries. Mm-hmm. In terms of features, 81% of developers says null safety was their favourite, followed by extension functions. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. And Java interoperability, the report found. Developers often migrate existing Java code to Kotlin. More than 87% of respondents have done these migrations using techniques like a wizard or rewriting code manually, according to the report. Have more than a quarter of respondents who migrated to Java had to revert for technical and organisational reasons when it comes to cross-platform support. Only about a quarter of respondents said they do this, with most opting for Kotlin slash native. Followed by Kotlin JS, it's likely the adoption of these features will pick up over time, the report noted. Key takeaways from the report are that Kotlin is going strong and will continue to grow. Zan Mark and Developer Evangelist at Pusher. <laughs> yeah, sounds like an advertising agency. Um, wrote in a blog post about the results. Our team at Pusher predicts over time more and more of that growth will come from new developers for whom Kotlin will be their first foray into programming. It just might happen. And they will judge every other language against Kotlin. Actually... Well, I'm the other way around. I'm going to judge Kotlin against every other language. <laughs> Especially um, Delphi and Paul and Pascal. Which is where I go. Its features and flexibility allow for great productivity and that could greatly influence the development of other programming languages as well. However, the question remains whether or not Kotlin will manage to seriously break into communities outside of Android. Report noted. All right. Um, when was this one written? 2019. Google Square and Atlassian. Atlassian. They're sprinting to use Kotlin's fastest growing programming language called the GitHub. Okay. Okay, so this is written a year later. Kotlin was developed in 2010. Okay. They become more expressive, writing the same code and Kotlin usually results in fewer lines of code. It says it's skyrocketing properly. Okay. Is that it? Is that it? Oh, it's business inside. Okay, right. They're not going to say a lot about it. So, cotton popularity. Okay. 17. Like scale and culture. Yeah, well, that's to be expected. All right. Let's 
Ghostwriter 2021. Ah, yeah, wrong place. Try again. Okay. Routines, the most part of case is shared by 10 percentage points in the past year. Modern programming language increases developers' happiness. Something you can do is kind of popularity among Android users. Java is still heavily used to develop the Android apps, got to replace Java in the Android app development niche. Stands for Kotlin Serverless Framework. It's focused on reducing serverless deployment creation by generating it from the code directly. October 19, 2021. Reason. Well, I mean, next two weeks is going to be full of exciting content. We've prepared lots of updates from the Kotlin team, news on Kotlin ecosystem and an opportunity to get a glimpse into the future of Kotlin. Kotlin's popularity grows in different areas within server side and education. 2016 article Most in demand programming languages Mehed. Alright, let's take a quick look at that. Come on. Okay, come on. Damn, I wonder if you could. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. All right. Useful as tits on a ball. <sighs> ah, right. That might work. Take a quick look. What are they going to try and every second tried ten years ago? Every second must be every second person tried to become a lawyer or economist today. Every second tries his hand at programming. Why? Because this demand for good programmers is growing exponentially. Ah, uh, advocacy. Okay. Well, I guess one of the things about programming, and this is where it's a great filter, is it's it's not easy work. At the end of the day, programming is a bit like the old days of electronics. There were two types of electronic technicians. There was those who truly understood the electronics, and there are those that you might call valve jockeys. They just pull in, pull out a valve, stick another one in, and see if it fixed the problem. If it did send it back to the user and charge them some money for the privilege. Now I want to know... Ah, let's do a search for Kotlin. GL. Uh, Alright. PipeScript Kotlin 7.1. Record the trendiest program language, but statistics show that demand is growing. One of the five most popular languages in the world. Big competitors such as Java and Python, giving in only the Go and Scala in his field. 
Yeah, Scalar was the one that was a very slow, I think it was Scalar, it was a very slow compilation. So, change in programming use. Kotlin, 182%. Dart. It really comes down to what you want to do. Um, I don't think desktop is going to be the way to go. I mean, already back in 2000 and... Oh, 2001, 2002, things were changing but not in a favourable way. Now with the um, addition of Android devices, there is an increase in demand for programs. So if you go on to Google Play, you can find programs that are there for pretty much everything. On well, the Stack Overflow survey, Kotlin ranks fourth among the most adored and desired programming languages. Developers love Kotlin for integration with Java and useful set of tools most loved, dreaded and wanted languages. Kotlin, 72%. What's that supposed to mean? Um, it's a first class language. Right. So it looks like it's got a fairly decent future. And with that kind of advocacy, it's probably enough to Okay. All right. Oh, that's 2018. No, not interested. I want something that's going to be. Okay, that can go there. State developer infographic system. That might be a quick look. That's coming from JetBrains, so take that one with a grain of salt. Seeing JetBrains have got a vested interest in pushing their product. Ugh. This thing features of Kotlin and Flutter, how they differ from each other, in which scenarios developers can use both frameworks to gain a maximum advantage. From Soap Labs, as per mobile app developers make use of cross platform technologies. Yes, that would be necessary. Gone those days when cross platform mobile app development used to have a single approach, React Native. Is it gone in new ways? Kotlin, open source, statically typed cross platform programming languages type interference was dominating the cross platform app development market with a few months at the beginning of 2017 the release of Google's Flutter hit the market hard making everyone wonder who will rule the cross platform mobile market. The reason behind the rising popularity of these cross platform frameworks is understandable. Single code base for multiple platforms, quick to market time, lower development costs. We're trying to enter into the world of mobile app development. One of the most puzzling questions being faced is which framework can help them build scalable cost effective yet secure mobile solutions so before we compare two frameworks which one is to see which one is better it's important to understand what these bring to the table flutter released in 2017 is google's user interface toolkit built natively compiled interactive and feature rich applications for web mobile desktop and embedded servers using single code base it's free open source from the fastest thing. What, 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 what language is it written? Kotlin developed gen, a general purpose program. Supported by Google. It's one of the most preferred languages. This user share codes, data, business logic across platforms, including Linux, Mac OS, Android, oh, Mac, iOS, and Java Virtual Machine. Oh, nice. That means you could potentially write it, uh, compile it natively to Linux. I guess that remains to be seen. Though the concept to invest in Kotlin for cross-platform app development is newfangled, it's but it's highly embraced by multiple brands, including da da da, da Autodesk, Wow, Quizlet, VMware, yep, Istrock. How popular these frameworks in the market? Turns popular, both Flutter and Kotlin frameworks are highly popular. 
since they're both open source, do they compete with each other? So you use one in favour of the other. Mobile app developers are showing interest to work with them. There are ample reasons to justify why Flutter shines to build cross-platform solutions. However, Kotlin has its own features and functionalities that made it shine as a top gig. Right. It looks like one or the other. You can't have both in, I suppose. If you just look at Google Trends, you'll notice Kotlin has skyrocketed in terms of popularity as compared to Flutter. Actually, let's look that up. Google Trends. Let's take a quick look at that. That's one thing I hadn't considered doing. Right, trends look to Google. That's what I want. I want to see how frequently it's showing up in the literature. Okay. <laughs> Interest over time. Oh. Okay, let's go back. Uh, we'll go back to the past five years. All right, so there was a big spike in 2017. <laughs> Looks like China's certainly interested in it in a big way. And then South Korea. It drops off like a stone here. Yeah. Then, then it had a drop for a while and then it's starting to climb again. Interest over time. What's this supposed to mean? What are these numbers? Hmm. All right, so we'll get rid of that. You can see the stack overflow around 55k questions targeted with Kotlin versus Flutter with a banging 83k questions tagged. Trend of graph of Flutter versus Kotlin. Okay, so it's kind. Flutter goes over the edge, all thanks to hot reloading functionality that offers to its users. So it really comes down to what you want to achieve. But the question that's not really answered is testing features and a unique widget testing feature. Kotlin's major focus lies in delivering back end as a service. Makes use of Firebase and I'm not particularly can not sure that I really want to be trying to use Firebase unless you can take Firebase and use it in other ways apart from uh, just as a cloud that's held by Google if you can take Firebase and, and maybe install it say on your own system which for which framework to 
choose for building killer apps, Flutter or Kotlin? There's no proper answer to this question. Uh, so it's giving me a time. Why not choose Flutter? Okay, so it's a bit, bit of bloatware. It tends to be bloatware in comparison to one of its apps named Hello World has a size 6.7 megabytes. We all know all you don't like to download an app that consumes too much space and time. All in all, plus it's not recommended to build comprehensive and complex projects. Mm, there you go. And then there's Dart. That must be part of Kotlin. Doesn't change the fact that the majority of developers barely know this language. Hence, there's a learning curve involved when developers use Kotlin. One of the major reasons behind Kotlin's popularity is Java compatibility. Covering Kotlin is one of the best choices while starting a new Android project or making changes to existing ones. It's the best alternative to build cross platform apps where the app size is big and the project is complex. Okay. High development costs. It's pretty user it delivers a semi native performance which makes the overall app development quite expensive. Lack of libraries still an experimental stage. There's only a few libraries able to develop apps. There might be an opportunity there for me to develop some apps and um, libraries and sell them off. The heap of new libraries for better development is expected with the release of the date time library. Require knowledge of tech stack. I will not replace all API. In order to build an app on Kotlin, the developer should have sound knowledge of each platform and API to work better. Who wins the race? Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. develop the company. Oh, no. Nah. Why would I do that? I can make up my own frickin' mind. All right. I think I'll probably stay with Kotlin. See, everywhere is 2021, okay. Multi-platform types of things. Including KDK 16. Okay, right. Hybrid and Framex, do you currently use? Work, personal side projects, plays around, other. Oh, I think I'll start using it for work. All right, okay. We're going to go with Kotlin. And now, having made that decision, I think it's a good time to make a break in the recording. And we'll go on to some more video straight after this. I'm George Tasker. Your boomer nerd. <laughs>